With WKUF News, I'm David Jackson for Friday, May 13th, 2016. Governor Rick Snyder says that he supports the return of power to the Flint City Council. Gary Ridley of the Flint Journal reports that in 2011, the elected members of the city council and the mayor lost power under the state financial emergency manager, including subpoena power. In January, the RTAB have voted to return some powers to the mayor, including appointment authority. Currently, all decisions have to be approved by both the council and mayor first before being sent to the Receivership Transition Advisory Board for final approval. However, the governor's communications director, Ari Adler, says that Snyder supports the council having its power restored with the understanding that the state-appointed RTAB will continue to be in place for financial oversight. The mayor said yesterday that she supports the city council having their full powers returned, but Weaver's chief of staff, Stephen Branch, told the RTAB that the mayor's office believes that there should be limits on the council's ability to pass resolutions that did not originate within the mayor's office. Branch cited instances in which resolutions passed a vote within the council and moved on to the RTAB without the mayor's approval, something that the mayor's office, according to the chief of staff, cannot tolerate. Under the city charter, the council has the ability to pass resolutions while the mayor has seven days to veto any proposal she does not agree with. And when asked, the state-appointed RTAB declined to act on the administration's concern, saying that it would not get involved with internal procedures of the city. Flint residents are being asked to aid in flushing the city's water pipes in the coming weeks. And to encourage participation, the state says that 100 percent of the cost of the water people use in May will be covered. In a press release from the governor's office, Flint residents are being encouraged to join in on the Flush for Flint campaign, an effort to accelerate the maintenance of the existing water infrastructure that would assist in restoring the usability of drinking water in the city. The program asks Flint residents to run their unfiltered kitchen and bathtub faucets five minutes per day for two weeks to ensure that orthophosphates coat the city's water pipes completely. The replacement of lead pipes in the city is still underway. However, this coating is meant to assist in keeping lead out of the water. The expanded Medicaid program may now be available to more than just Flint residents. Jaquanda Johnson of the Flint Journal reports that the expansion now could cover students who commute into schools from outside of Flint who may have been exposed to Flint's tainted water. Governor Snyder, along with the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, announced this week that people ages 21 and under and pregnant women who have been exposed to Flint water may be eligible. Regional Director of the USDHHS, Kathleen Falk, says that while not all children will be affected at all or affected in the same way, her department wants to make sure that they give every possible resource to children so they can have the best start and the best life. To find out if you are eligible or to enroll in the plan, the Michigan DHHS says that people can visit any one of their offices in Flint, including the Department of Health and Human Services office on Union Street downtown. Mozilla has taken the FBI to court to get details of how the agency compromised the Tor network. The software company posted a legal filing they submitted in the U.S. District Court of Tacoma, Washington, that shows a request of the court to modify its order to require the government to disclose the vulnerability used to compromise the network. The Onion Router, or Tor network, is a peer-to-peer service that is designed to anonymize users online. Mozilla is requesting that the hack is revealed to them before the trial in order that the vulnerability can be fixed before it is more widely disclosed. According to the company, the Tor browser is based partially on their Firefox browser, and some have speculated that the vulnerability may exist in the portion of their own browser code. The government says that they should not be compelled to disclose any details about the tool used. However, Mozilla Chief Legal Officer Danelle Dixon Thayer says that they are unaware of which flaw was used, and were the government to describe the flaw in court, security for all Firefox users would be compromised. For more information about today's stories, visit WKUF.FM. I'm David Jackson.